Firstly, I would just like to say thank you to everyone who is here. Um, I'm the main organiser of this event, and I'm the main organiser of all the Guantanamo anniversary events that we've held since 2008. And honestly, when people say, let's hope there's no more anniversaries, I really, really hope there are no more anniversaries. There's a lot of work that goes into planning these small actions, and I'd particularly like to thank everyone who was involved and did a lot of work in, in the run-up over the past four months until today, as well as everyone else who is here with us as well. Um, and all the other groups, there's some Stop the War groups, some Amnesty groups, there's the Syrians who come and join us as well. So I'd like to thank everybody for their solidarity and for understanding just how important an issue this really is. As some of the people said, it's not just about America, it's about us as well. Okay, It's not about what Britain is doing, and it's not just about Guantanamo Bay, it's about Bagram, it's about Abu Ghraib, it's about prisoners in unjust systems all over the world. That's who we are asking for freedom and for justice for. No justice, no peace, no peace, no justice. No um, justice, no peace. I <laughs> There's lots of them. I'd like to read out a statement from this lady over here. Her name is Nermeen Saleh. Her husband, his name is Shoki Ahmed Omar. He has been held illegally in Iraq for the past nine years. In a, quite an ironic situation, he's actually an American citizen. So people always say, what would happen if an American was held in Guantanamo Bay? Her husband is the answer to that question. He has been held in Bagram, he has been held in Camp Nama, and if you read his story, it's actually the story of American torture in Iraq. Um, she has a statement that she would like to be read out today. He actually disappeared shortly at the end of last year when he was being held in Abu Ghraib. Shoki Ahmed Omar is an American citizen who has been unjustly detained in the jails of Iraq for nine years. He has never been allowed to see a lawyer or discuss his case. Furthermore, he is not allowed to contact his family. Three months ago, we were informed by the International Committee of the Red Cross that my husband has been transferred to the infamous torture facility of a grave. We hold our breaths every day as we hear about inmates dying under torture in Abu Ghraib. My husband has been on hunger strike for six months. As a result, he now vomits blood and suffers from many illnesses, yet he is not even given the most basic medical care. As we have no way of being reassured about his state, so long as he remains in that notorious place, our initial aim is to get him transferred to a prison in the north of Iraq where we can at least have a chance of visiting him. I ask every person and every organization capable of helping my husband to please help save what is left of his life. The London Guantanamo campaign supports Shoki Ahmed Omar and we support all prisoners who are illegally detained in the United States, in Guantanamo Bay, in Iraq, in the United Kingdom, wherever they may happen to be. I'm going to actually ask Zainab here to say something now. She's very brave. When we know that Shoki that, um, that Chakalama hasn't met his youngest child. Zainab has never met her father either, okay? Zainab said, free my father. Maybe you want to yeah. say that along with her? Free my father! Free my father! Free my father! Now! I want, I want to, to see, see my, my father. father. <laughs> I want to hug my father.
So, uh, this is a message from Norman Baker. Thanks. Uh, I, yeah. It is deeply disappointing that Guantanamo Bay remains open and that large numbers of individuals have been held for years in detention without any proper legal justification, without charge and without trial. Naturally, we in the UK are particularly concerned about the continued detention of Shakarama, a concern only heightened by the state of his health. As a government minister, I can vouch for the fact that our Foreign Office has actively and repeatedly raised the matter with the US authorities, but sadly without success. I congratulate Amnesty and all the many individuals across party and of no party who keep the spotlight on this case and call upon Barack Obama not just to release Shakarama, but to honour his commitment to close Guantanamo Bay and remove this stain from the United States. Thank you. Now, I have letters from um, the youngest Guantanamo detainee. His name was Omar Kadar. He was 15 years old when he was captured. He was so very severely wounded. After 10 years, he did a plea deal with the Americans because that was the only way out of Guantanamo. He is now in maximum security in his home country of Canada. I write letters to him and he writes to me and I had this lovely, lovely Christmas card from him. And he says, Dear Mrs. Brown, I just wanted to wish you and all the lovely people a Merry Christmas and a New Year filled with peace, joy and love for all the world. Happy Seasons, Omar. He really is a lovely, lovely man. Go on to the internet and read his letters and read about him. He really is a gorgeous, lovely man. He is now 27 years old. He was 15 when he was captured. He's blind in one eye, he's going blind in the other. But he has just passed his exams so he's taking exams in prison. Please read about him. Thank you. Anyway, um, Jean Lambert MEP couldn't be here with us today because she's at a conference in Greece, but she sent us a statement, so I'm going to read that out now. So Jean Lambert MEP, Green MEP for London says, I'm very sorry I cannot be with you today, but I am in Athens speaking on the healthcare crisis in Greece another avoidable tragedy. This is the 12th year of the existence of Guantanamo. Every year we mark the anniversary, hoping it will be the last time, hoping that those still detained there will be released or charged, and that those charged will be tried in public civil court where all the evidence can be heard and tested. The fact that Guantanamo remains open is a stain on the human rights record of the United States. President Obama must fulfill his pledge to close the camp. I welcome the recent small progress. I welcome the decision of the Slovakian government to take three Uyghur detainees and wish more EU governments would take such action as the European Parliament has repeatedly demanded. The UK still has to bring Shaka Arma home to his family in London. I still cannot understand why this has not happened. He has been cleared for transfer, he has not been charged, he should be here with those who love him. Today's demonstration is important, it shows that those held in Guantanamo are not forgotten and that there are people who believe that international law must be upheld and that human rights must be respected, Guantanamo must close. Just one final thing, and I'm going to hand it over to all of you for some chanting. Um,